Good morning. It's time to get in touch. In Touch is a public affairs show dedicated to improving the lives of Susquehanna Valley residents. I'm Freddie Hammer, News Director at Backyard Broadcasting. And we're so grateful today to have the Director of Veterans Affairs in Lycoming County, Michael McMunn, with us on In Touch. Good morning, Mr. McMunn. <laughs> Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me about the service that you gave us for in the military. Well, I was uh, in the U.S. Army back in the late 1960s, early 70s. Uh, I was just in for four years, so I'm not a military retiree and very proud of my military service. Well, we're grateful for the service you gave us. Thank you for that freedom. Oh, it, it was an honor to have served. What areas of the country and or the world were you in? Well, several bases in the United States uh, for training purposes. And then I served two years in Germany, uh, left Germany, and then I went to Vietnam. Tell me about your family. Well, my family, I'm married, uh, have four children, six grandchildren, two great Three, uh, there's one more great grandchild on the way. Wonderful. So, That's excellent. <laughs> I'm losing count here. <laughs> That's the privilege uh, they, that you have to lose count of grandchildren. <laughs> Honestly, it is. It's, they multiply. <laughs> Well, it's wonderful stuff. I love it. So you are one of our hometown heroes. And of course, we see those banners across Lycoming County in Williamsport and Via Bella. There's some hanging up. So let's make sure that we have people up there. Has anyone ever made a banner of you? They have. Oh, nice. I was honored uh, several years ago by the Lycoming County uh, Veterans Council with a banner. And it hangs proudly in my uh, me room. Your McMunn <laughs> man cave. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the little bit of the beginnings of the Hometown Hero program. We were talking uh, before we got started about the Valley Preventative Services. Valley Prevention Services, about uh, probably two decades ago, initiated that Hometown Hero program. Mm -hmm. They used it to fund the um, drug and alcohol program services, education services that they had at the time. Mm -hmm. um, they went out of business back then. The director of uh, Veterans Affairs, George Hykus, said we can't let this uh, Hometown Hero program die. So revived it. It's been a, a great program, not only to honor the veterans, both living and deceased, who have served their community and their country, but also to um, get funds for programs that the Hometown Heroes sponsors. And that's mainly veterans in need, families in need. They've fallen behind on the rent. They've fallen behind on the water bill, the electric bill. Maybe they need groceries, a water heater. There's lots and lots of, of things that over the years, Hometown Heroes has stepped in and helped those families financially. So you can put forth some money, some funds, and put the banner up, and that goes toward all of these services. It does. Right now, the uh, cost of a banner is $210. We have an early bird special in the spring up until the middle of April, and they can get it at somewhat uh, less, about $177. Okay. Cutoff is uh, September the 4th, and then new banners for 2023 will go up the end of October, getting ready for uh, Veterans Day, right. and then they re stay up for a year, and then they'll come down the following October. We uh, have a ceremony to initiate the new banners, to dedicate them, take the old banners down. They're washed and wrapped up and then given back to the families or to the sponsoring agency. Mm -hmm. It might have been a VFW or American Legion or a family or an employer, too. They come from all over. And in fact, sometimes somebody doesn't have an individual soldier or a sailor or airman to dedicate it, and they'll just say, hey, we're donating $210, and you get a deserving veteran. You pick. You pick. <laughs> the generosity of people in this area is just amazing. Absolutely. So we are trying to uh, get banners all along um, Via Bella and maybe extend it to Hepburn Street. And, uh, sure, we got lots of streets. We <laughs> 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 yeah, we do. We can fill them up. <laughs> so how does someone go online to find it? Is that lyco.org? Lyco.org. Okay. There's application there. Or they can stop in the uh, Lycoming County Veterans Affairs office. We are at 330 Pine Street okay. in the Executive Plaza building up on the fourth floor. And we have applications there. It's a great program. And we've helped hundreds of veterans and families over the year with you know financially uh, and that's where all the money goes like coming county hometown heroes is a non-profit organization all the money goes into that fund uh, and the only thing our only expenses really are paying for the banners and it's all volunteers that put them up and wash them and uh, participate in the dedication ceremony. I bet families are just so grateful when they're able to do something like that for their loved one that they may not have been able to have some moments at the end with. 
They they are. I know that my own family. I had to encourage my my uh, in laws. Uh, hey, uh, Pap needs a picture up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, <neat. laughs> That's so we finally have uh, have my father in law Leon Kaiser uh, up there on Via Bella. So well, we went a whole new round. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Excellent. So let's talk about the different categories of help that the like I mean County Veterans Association can help with. I mean, at, f- at first you're talking just about health care in general. Oh, uh, you're talking about now VA, uh, and that's. The Lycoming County uh, Veterans Affairs Office is uh, really responsible for uh, taking care of our veterans in Lycoming County. And that means enrolling them in uh, VA health care if they're eligible, VA uh, compensation and benefits, Mm -hmm. uh, burial benefits, benefits for widows. And all that goes in. That's uh, our meat and potatoes, really. Uh, We're there every day. Many people call and ask about those things. Yes. And uh, right now, there's a heightened interest because of uh, what's called the PACT Act, okay. which was the uh, recently enacted... For the uh, burn pits. There's a lot more to it than just the burn pits. Okay. A lot of stuff in the news. So we're getting more veterans and families calling and saying, hey, what's this about? Uh, how can I get enrolled in VA health care? We encourage every veteran out there to enroll in VA health care. There are income limitations. However, those are sometimes waived depending on the veteran's uh, period of service, Mm -hmm. uh, whether they have Purple Heart or whether they already have a disability compensation rating, where they've served, if they were in Vietnam or if they were exposed to radiation. There's lots of things that can exclude the income limitations that are out there. What is the cultural shift that's going to need to happen to have veterans feel more comfortable going to the VA? I know that there's a contingency of veterans that feel that they don't want to do that. Many do and feel and have great care. You know, you're right. I think the VA took a bad rap. We don't work for the VA. We're county employees. Okay. I want to make that clear. But we are accredited by the VA to enroll people in health care, to file for compensation, file you're appeals. You're liaison. We are. I always say we just uh, push paper. Uh <laughs> To some extent, we're not the ones who make the decision on the eligibility of a veteran or the ratings for veterans, but we're going to look out for veterans. Our job is to be an advocate, and I stress that. We're advocates for our veterans. And we'll go to the nth degree to ensure that they uh, are taken care of. You have the tips and tricks that you may be able to help them with. I I think, you know, sometimes we do. I mean, we do this every day for a living. Right. So we know what forms need to be filed and uh, how to answer a a VA inquiry. But going back to your your question, uh, the VA, I think, has come a long way. They're more responsive to veteran needs. And I'll tell you, in this community, we have two great organizations, two VA organizations, and one is the VA Outreach Clinic okay. down here on Warren Ave and right. down across the parking lot from Divine Providence. Okay. And great health care. They have, uh, you know, they're fully staffed with uh, doctors, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, and they do most everything except operations, I think. Okay. You know? And then the other excellent facility that we have, an asset that we have in this community is the Vet Center. And the Vet Center is there for uh, readjustment counseling for combat veterans and their families. So I really want to put a pitch in for both those places. Just, Does not every community have that? No. That's no. unfortunate. It is. Um, and, for example, the Vet Center, I think, covers probably about eight counties. I may be wrong okay. on that. All here in central Pennsylvania? Yeah. Yeah, in this area of north central Pennsylvania. Again, they do uh, readjustment counseling. It seems uh, like a long way to go for something that's so necessary. And, and they do outreach services. Oh, that's I mean, good. yep. Their people are out in those communities in Potter County and Wellsboro and down south in Lewisburg sure. and Mifflinburg and all those places. God bless uh, them. With mobile services. So try not to let any veteran go being ignored. We want to get people to make sure that they're checking on veterans. I mean, you t- talk about the terrible heat of several weeks ago that we're talking about hopefully people are being looked in on make sure their utilities are working you know that's a great point that reminds me of something that happened last year and it was hot it was during the summer last year Uh it goes to how these organizations work collaboratively you know with us we work with them we refer people back and forth someone at the uh, clinic it came to their attention that they had a veteran who had a heat stroke okay he was hospitalized and they were going to release him to his apartment but he had no air conditioning oh. so contact us we get a hold of hometown heroes and within a couple hours we had an air conditioner in the guy's window so that is saved his recovery it did and that's how we work collaboratively and how things come together a need is established and somebody steps in to do it to, to fill it in a quiet way, which yeah. is sort of the way of men who serve. Sure. We don't just have uh, our local resources 
for uh, uh, hometown heroes. If somebody has a need, there's a, the Pennsylvania Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, okay. DMVA, has a Veteran Temporary Assistance Program, VTA. And there again, they have a huge reservoir of money. You know that uh, you get your um, automobile renewal or your license plate, and do you oh, want yeah. to check off three bucks for the Veterans uh, Assistance Program? That's where all that money goes into the Veterans Temporary Assistance Program. Amazing. That money then in turn goes back to the veterans who are in need. If they can establish a need, honorably discharged veteran and a Pennsylvania resident, they can help with those bills too. So we work with those. We take applications, send those into DMVA, and they make the approvals and disperse money. The other agency, it's not really an agency, but a wonderful asset, and that's the Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors Foundation. Okay. We see a lot of marketing about them. Well, there's a National Wounded Warriors, and then there's a Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors. Okay. They Not, are different. They are different. And the Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors are a wonderful organization to help veterans. And we oftentimes will leverage all three. So, for example, the DMVA will only go up to $1,600 in a 12-month period. Okay. A good example. We had a soldier who uh, he needed a furnace, and uh, the furnace was about $2,800, I guess, somewhere okay. around that. So we managed to get 1600 from DMVA, Military and Veterans Affairs. Uh-huh. We managed to get about $1,000 from Wounded Warriors, and so there's still a couple hundred dollars shortfall there, so uh, Hometown Heroes kicked in. So we had 100% funding and got the fellow a uh, furnace. Everything is different. Every single case takes you in a different direction. Oh, it does. In, in fact, I love this job. It's the best job I ever had. That's great, Mike. I'm glad. <laughs> it's working with, with veterans and coming in and hearing their stories and uh, trying to address their needs, whether it's health care or whether it's filing a claim for a service-connected disability. That's, another, that's a, one of our biggest things okay. is filing claims for disability claims. Or if a veteran dies of a service-connected disability or possibly benefits to uh, the surviving spouse. Pension benefits? The pension benefits plus what's called a dependency indemnity compensation. I see. So that the uh, surviving spouse can get some of the uh, pension that the, the veteran had earned. Some veterans will say, yeah, I'm not going to put in for put a claim in because there are other veterans that need it worse than I do. That is such a common thing. I hear it all the time. And it's not true. There's money there to go around. Everybody who wants to be served will be served. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, I, I think that you'll see where there might be times when the VA does have to cut back or, or eliminate some services or something. I haven't seen that, uh, that they've just really been enlarging things. And with this new PACT Act, I think it's going to be uh, enlarged even farther. Yeah, it looks like it's plus health care and different Medicare benefits are all changing. Well, yes. So they've expanded uh, uh, greatly the um, uh, range of veterans who are going to be taken care of, both in, with health care and with claims. For example, new veterans who got out, they could only, there was a limit on five years. Okay. And they had to file within five years for health care. Now that's being extended to 10 years. For, that's just one example. I sort of, in your mind, a person might think about veterans and they receive these helps from different agencies as an, as older men and women. But we're talking about men and women who are 25, 30 that also need these benefits. Oh, absolutely. Going back to your, you were talked about a little bit about the burn pits. Yeah. You know, th- these are young veterans. These are people who just uh, have served in Iraq and Afghanistan and, and other places where these burn pits were, were common. Yeah. They aren't old people. They aren't geriatric cases, you know, that. They have a whole life that they need to live and be hopefully happy doing it. And be taken care of. Yes. And if they've suffered uh, uh, injuries or illnesses because of, uh, of that exposure, toxic exposure, then they should be compensated for it. So that's the one thing that we are looking out for. Uh, and this all, whole thing is kind of new. I mean, it just passed. The president just signed. It. And um, so some of these benefits don't kick in for maybe a couple of years. But we're there to guide the veteran through it. The big thing I want to emphasize, and that is file a claim. Okay. What happens is if a veteran files a claim and ultimately the claim is decided, their benefits will go back to the date that they filed the claim. I see. So it's really important that even they might not think they're, they've got a, a disability. Lots of time. They're not going to have the paperwork ready until four years or whatever. But well, what happens is that there's a, a form called an intent to file. Okay. And uh, the intent to file locks in a year period of time where it gives them the time to gather evidence to support their claim, come in and file. If the claim's ultimately uh, uh, 
adjudicated in their favor, it'll go back to the date that they originally filed. Well, excellent. So filing, coming in, getting it on record is really, really important. Tell me about the office again. They can come to you. Sure. Lycoming County uh, Veterans Affairs. We're in the Executive Plaza building. That's 330 Pine Street, and we're on the fourth floor. Our phone number is 570-327-2365. Is that the number two to call for Hometown Hero Banners, we'd call them? Yep. Call you? Do you answer the phone, Mike? (laughs) No. (laughs) I am blessed. You know, uh, I said this is the best job I ever had, and I'm blessed with a great staff. Uh, Natalie Steppe is the Assistant Veterans Affairs Director, and Jim Mitchley, he's our Veteran Service Officer, and Keely Hitchens is our, our receptionist. I spoke most with Keely. Her smile comes across over the over the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> I am exceptionally blessed with a great staff and uh, all the stuff that we can do. And and uh, honestly, the uh, support of the, the county commissioners, we couldn't do it without them funding the programs that we do. And one of the other big things that we do is putting out all the flags, the cemetery flags. They're- we decorate probably close to 19,000. It's probably over that now. In Lycoming County? In Lycoming County. Wow. We put 19,000 flags out. And that's not just done by our office. We do a few of them. But we rely on uh, the Cub Scouts and the fire companies and uh, VFW, American Legion. I go down the hill at past Montgomery and seeing that on the left, there are so many flags there. There are so many better. At Green Lawn, yeah. And I think the American Legion in uh, Montgomery, I think, takes care of them. But we have uh, a great network of volunteers that put out those flags every year before uh, Memorial Day. How about the wreath laying? Wreaths across America. That's what it is. Yeah. We're not directly involved with them, but obviously we support them. It goes hand in hand. I mean, you see something beautiful in the cemetery to honor such wonderful people. And then you also see those same things for people living and, and past in Via Bella, like we see on the Hometown Hero Banners. Yeah, right. We're fortunate. We have a great legacy uh, of uh, veterans uh, in this community, men and women who have served over the years from the Revolutionary War to uh, to now. Have you gotten a chance to see the Gold Star Monument at the? New oh place? yes, I was up for the dedication. Okay, it's fantastic. What is that on Fourth Street? Where yep, is- up at Veterans Memorial Park, up at Wahoo Drive and West Fourth Street. If people haven't visited that park lately, they got to get up there. With the there's new memorials. Uh, there's a uh, stone there for every war now from Revolution. Wow to um, current war, global war on terrorism. They have the A-6 intruder uh, jet there, M-60 tank, the new Gold Star family memorial. And uh, they're continuing to add something. I was just talking to one of the volunteers from up there, and they're going to put a um, Medal of Honor monument up too. We have one Medal of Honor recipient from Lycoming County that we know of. Well, we're certainly thrilled about all the choices that we have to be able to help veterans in our area. In fact, with Lyco.org, that's a good place to start. Yep. And we can definitely help out with the Hometown Hero Program. Get our f- funds together. Why not get a whole office, put together a few dollars for each person that take care of one banner? Right hey, there, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all these ideas. Yeah, honor somebody in your office that's uh, a, a veteran. Uh, again, families, the American Legions, the VFWs, the Korean War veterans, they usually all put up a uh, a sponsor a banner for their members or somebody that's deserving. We want to keep asking the questions so that we can keep helping. For sure. Please do. Michael McMunn, he's the Director of Veterans Affairs at Lycoming County Veterans Affairs and available online or in the office at 330 Pine Street. Call them 327-2365. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. It's wonderful to have you on In Touch. <laughs> this has been great. In Touch is locally produced in our studios at 1685 Four Mile Drive in Williamsport. To get in touch with us regarding questions, comments, or topic ideas, call weekdays between 8 and 5 570-323-8200. You can also write to us at 1685 Four Mile Drive, Williamsport, PA, 17701, attention Freddie Hammer, or email me at fhammer at backyardbroadcasting.com. For archive programs of our In Touch series, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Backyard Broadcasting. Each current weekly program is featured on the Backyard Broadcasting websites. Individual opinions expressed here don't necessarily reflect the opinions of the management or staff. Thanks for listening to In Touch, a production of Backyard Broadcasting.